people need fire because of the cold. And so you got to make the fire. And the Bible says that these barbarians, these people who they could not speak to, could not communicate with. Isn't it amazing? There's a language barrier, but they still know that the people are cold. Yes. Yes. They can't talk to them, but they know they need fire. Yes. That's not about education. Man. That's not about theology and PhD. These people are cold. And they don't need your PhD. They don't need you to talk something they don't understand. They just need some fire. The Bible says that they kindled the fire and catch this because of the cold, okay, and the rain. And so the exposure of the water and all that was going on now is affected. And so what I like about the text is this, that Paul does not take hospitality lightly. Yes. He recognizes that these people have gone out their way to bring fire. And so he understands fire can only continue when it's being fueled and maintained. Can I preach that one? So the text tells me that he now noticed the fire is there. And so the Bible says that he himself goes out to get some sticks to maintain the fire that's already there. I'm going to preach him that will preach. What we need is folks who can maintain the fire. Because there's some folks who only rely on certain people to bring the fire. But it's your responsibility to find some sticks to continue the fire that is already there. I ain't supposed to come every Sunday and stir you up. You ought to have something inside of you yourself that can maintain what is already here. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, get some, get some, get something. Get some, get something. I need something to help this thing continue. I need somebody to help this anointing. And so he takes the bottle of sticks and he comes to maintain the fire that's already going. There's no communication. Nobody told him to bring the sticks because he can't understand them anyway. But excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, Mr. Francis, it's not my job. And, you know, I don't want to go and do anything that's not my job. Yes, it is your job. But I am the preacher, I'm not the preacher, I'm not the preacher, and I have no good certificate, they have no daily. You don't need no more division. You just have to have fire, just have some sticks. And what the people need to do is stop waiting for elevation and stop waiting for credentials to do what you're supposed to do. You want to come in there with Thanksgiving. You want to come in with a hallelujah. You want to come in with a thank you, Jesus. And then say the fire. All right. That's right, mother. That's right, mother. That's what I'm talking about. I need to pray this right here. Somebody clap. Somebody clap. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. I can't hear you. in the fire. And then all of a sudden, a viper jumps out of the fire and fastened to his hands. He 
his hands. Everybody say his hands. A viper. Everybody say a viper. Now what is the text? How the Bible says this viper. Another text is a venomous beast. Uh, so then now, in the text, when it uses the word beast, it's now bringing us to a greater understanding from the, the Greek mentality. Whenever they use the word beast, they are saying to you that this is not no ordinary viper. This is a poisonous and a big, intimidating, long viper. And it tells me the viper now has only been exposed because of fire. But understand that the viper bishop jumps out of the fire and goes directly for his hand. I wish I could tell you, I have the time, but the word hands is very important in scripture because when you hear from the Hebrew mentality, the word hand in the Hebrew is called yad, in which we get the word yada, which means to extend your hands. It is that we do in order to praise. Hands is important because it's symbolic of creativity. We create things with our hands. The Bible says whatever that Hands are to do, do it with all thy might. Hands are important, ladies and gentlemen. Hands are symbolic, please. From a spiritual perspective, from a natural perspective, hands are symbolic of creativity. But from a spiritual perspective, hands is symbolic of ministry. Yeah. How do you know that, John? Let me tell you. Look at the scripture. The Bible says, uh, contrary to a lot of people, that God's power was not in Moses' rod. The power was in his hands. Most people say that he put the rod out and the waters divided. You need to read your Bible again. He stretched out his hands and the water divided. He lifted up his rod and stretched out his hands towards the sea. Let me help him. Now then, John, what is this? What is it about the rod? And what is it about the hands? Let me tell you, number one. The rod, the rod. Whenever you hear about rod, it tells us, it gives us a symbol of shepherding. It teaches us about leading. The rod is the same thing that is symbolic of authority. Thy rod and thy staff may comfort me. And rod, that same rod word, if you look in the Hebrew, the same word for rod is the same word for scepter. Okay, what is a scepter? It's the thing that the king lifts up, that he had to lift up to make sure Esther could come in. Because if she did, if he didn't lift that up, she would lose her life. The scepter is symbolic of authority. And hands is symbolic of ministry. That is why God says, this is what I want to do to you, Moses. Take your hands, just in case you don't know in the scripture, in Exodus 4. I want you to take your hands, put it in your bosom. And then he said, take it out, and it became leprous. And then afterwards he said, come on, put it back in again. And then it became cleansed. He says, well, I'm trying to show you that there's power in your hands. Okay, and then he says, now this is what I want you to do. Take that rod. The rod was nothing. But this is what I want you to do. Take the rod, throw it down. And the Bible says that the rod uh, turned into a snake. Please understand this. And the Bible says that Moses fled from the snake. Can I explain to you that should never happen? Can I tell you why it should never happen? Because and Moses was brought up in Pharaoh's house. And the Pharaohs used snakes as guidance. If you would notice and look at any Pharaoh and see their mitre or see their head covering, at the beginning 
and there's always a python a snake and they were used to snakes and they were used to operating that's why the magicians came with their snake and then afterwards he said let me explain something to you what God was doing when he asked him to throw his rod right down he was sh sh um, showing him that he's got authority over serpents that's why he said when he saw it he ran away from it and they 